All right, so I'm going to start with, um, so yeah, for the demo workflow, I'll start with just kind of the installation that can be done both through vSphere. I'll show you through vSphere and then also um, can be done through the SaaS manager. And then we'll talk a little bit about the plugin UI, and then I'll go into the, the SaaS manager UI. OK. So like I said, the first thing I want to show you is if you have, you know, again, this is that whole integration into the virtualization layer and, and being tightly coupled with VMware. So if you have a cluster which does not yet have AppDefense installed, you can simply click on that cluster and you know, go into your summary tab and just enable AppDefense. And this will go ahead and automatically install that VIB and you know, the associated uh, VM tools on, on the VMs to get you up and running, get those VMs protected, get you ready to go into discovery mode and, and create all those things. <coughs> um, for, for hosts where I already have, um, sorry. I already have AppDefense installed. Uh, when I come into that security tab, when there are upgrades available, we'll let you know that information. And again, through vSphere, you'll be able to automatically uh, perform those tasks. Okay, so now I'm going to hop into the plugin. So when you enable uh, that license for vSphere Platinum, we'll have a plugin that we generate within the vSphere client itself. And you know, that just shows up here under your shortcuts, under your menu, everything else. And like I said, right, this plugin is designed for the VI admin, so it's to give that visibility, right? We don't necessarily want the VI admin to say that, hey, I, I need this application to run. I don't care what behavior it's doing. I'm just going to allow all the behavior, right? We want that to reside with the security team, which is on the SaaS manager. Um, so we've you know, kind of decided to keep the scope of the plugin within VI admin, uh, within vSphere client, to be primarily focused on the VI admin tasks and, and responsibilities of having that visibility. So you can see here kind of one of the, you know, the key things we're going to show you is that list of processes. And you know, as I mentioned from that verification cloud, the associated processes that are at high risk. Um, and so here you can see you know, in this demo environment that we've flagged uh, CMD. So I can click on you know, that little bar that had my um, high risk processes. And I'll see that you know, CMD, we have that again, the reputation that we've provided from the app verification cloud. And I can see, okay, where, where was uh, C, oh, oops, didn't mean to jump into that so fast, but you could see where CMD, which VMs it was running on, and then go directly into that VM within the vSphere client still, right? So all contained within the same uh, UI framework. And once I'm here, I can see, okay, now I'm on that VM in the monitor app defense security tab. Let me see exactly what CMD was executing. And so I can see the list of you know, CLIs. If there's multiple, we'll show you multiple CLIs, the path arguments. And when there's any you know, outbound network behavior, inbound network behavior, we'll also show you that so that you can, again, really understand, give that visibility, and take that information you know, as needed to the security team to, to take appropriate action. So is there a role-based access control so I can even limit this from viewing from anywhere? Because to be honest, I don't want my VI admins to know what processes are running. Right. Um, so I think today there, there is not RBAC. Um, it is a high priority project for us, though. All right. Thank you. Um, so your outbound and inbound connections, yes. do they also track the port? Or yes, just they do. So they'll, IP. they'll do uh, remote and local IP, um, remote and local port, and then also the protocol. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, the other, I mean, the other data we collect, I think, is all up there. The CLI, the process name, the path, um, the hash was on the previous screen. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Otherwise, I'll hop into our SaaS manager. So okay. what happens if there's something bad? Does it stop it? So yeah, so I can show you that in the SaaS manager. So that's where, again, right, we have the protect mode. We have the automated responses. So you could choose, yes, I want to block for this. Um, and I'll show you the breakdown. But we have, a, based on the violation, whether it was outbound, inbound, just process execution by itself, you can say, I just want you to alert, or I want you to block, or I want you to power off the VM, suspend it, et cetera. Okay, so I'll hop into the SaaS manager now. Um, okay, so here, you know, this is the landing page, the dashboard. Again, just kind of a quick overview of what you're seeing, you know, how many VMs are in protected mode, scopes, things like that. Um, but what I really want to focus on is kind of diving into one of the scopes, talking about some of those protection and, and response um, mechanisms you can take, actions you can take and just a little bit more about what we show here. 
So this scope is already in protected mode. Um, it has that red dot because there's an alert that I'm going to show you later. Uh, but basically here we're going to show you, you know, the number of behaviors that we're seeing in any new alerts and, and the number of VMs. Um, I think more importantly when you're in discovery mode here, we, we have that burn down chart that I was describing which will kind of give you this bar chart of the number of new behaviors we've seen each day so that you can make that determination that, okay, we haven't seen any new behaviors. Typically it's just, you know, anywhere like a couple weeks um, that we'll be able to capture all the behaviors and then you can make the decision to move it into protected mode. And so down here, uh, maybe I can reduce, we don't need to be that big, do we? Um, yeah, so here you can kind of see all three charts. So this is where I was talking about the information that we get from the app verification cloud based on the behavior. So whether you're in discovery mode or protected mode, we'll present you with these three, you know, charts or widgets, whatever you want to call them. So the first one is that, you know, process reputation. So broken down by each service, how many processes have, you know, do we have the threat feed for, do we have our social assurance for, do we have the behavior analysis. So you can see we have kind of three classifications, trusted, unknown, or suspicious. And again, you know, of course it's a demo environment, but you can see we're getting pretty high percentages of kind of behaviors that we're aware of and that we've modeled uh, and that we can give you insights on. And then down at the bottom here, you've got the behavior analysis, right, which is again looking at a specific process, the associated CLIs that it um, executes and the network behaviors and telling you whether those are the expected behaviors. Uh, and then the integrity checks, right, which again, that alert that I talked about, here we have the guest integrity code, which is actually that, you know, corruption of, of the app defense module itself. So we'll flag that and, and we've also flagged it as an alert, which um, I'll show you a little bit in a little bit. Okay, so kind of moving along through this, uh, the views in the scope. So we'll also have our uh, topology mapping here look a little prettier. Um, so here this is where I was talking about that we, we give you that mapping of you know how your VMs are deployed, how they're communicating with each other, what behaviors they're they're all doing. So you know as I mentioned we have the web we have three services in this scope. One is the web, DB and, and the app itself. So if we focus on the web, here I can see that okay my web service is communicating, uh, I believe that's my app service and if I you know click on that line itself I can say, okay, it's Internet Explorer using TCP on, on port 80 to communicate with that app. Um, if I go and see, okay, what other connections is the web service making, um, I can look at the set of private IP, uh, private IPs that it's communicating with and kind of get that list and, and again see like, you know, for here, for LSAS, for example, right, I can see the process, the exact behavior that it's doing and then I can see the reputation, right? So basically from this information, you can essentially say that, yes, you know, this is good. This is how I'm expecting LSAS to behave both from your perspective and from app defense to say that this is, you know, a known good behavior uh, for that process. We'll also show you, oops, sorry. We'll also show you the set of public IPs um, that are being communicated with. And then we'll do some kind of intelligent wildcarding um, where, you know, you don't want to get if you're communicating within a range that seems to be the known good range of IPs, we don't want to have to generate a deviation or an alert for each new IP. We kind of want to say that, okay, this range is known to be good. And so we'll do the appropriate wildcarding uh, over there for those specific behaviors. So between the dashboard and topology, you're kind of getting the, the high level view of does everything look good? What's going on? Um, before, you know, you, if you want, you can dive more deeply into the services view where we're going to show you, you know, kind of the manifest that we've created, right? What are all the processes we've seen running and the associated behaviors? And I'm just going to filter this uh, quickly to kind of show some more of the relevant processes that do have network behavior. So here you can see, you know, again, for LSAS, right? We've done our behavior check and we've also done the reputation check and we're telling you that score right here. And when I click into it, I can again, you know, see what CLIs are being executed, what IP addresses and ports are, are being, you know, set to allowed, and all that information associated with that specific process that, that's gone into the manifest. Uh, and then another thing I want to highlight here is, I think, you know, you brought up the question about how do I set those rules, how do I, how do I set those responses? So again, on a per service basis, I can say that, okay, you know, for all outbound connections, do I want to alert, block, snapshot, suspend, quarantine, and do I want those to be manual or automatic, right? So giving that level of control, um, by default, you know, we're just going to alert, but for specific environments, you may want to block, you may want to quarantine, et cetera. 
You know. And all of the settings can be dumped out to a config file to be reviewed later? Uh, I believe so, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so the last thing then, oh, sorry, was there a question? No. Okay, I thought I saw a hand go up. <laughs> um, so the last thing I want to show is just the alerts. Um, I think we're running right up on time. So with the alerts, right, these are, again, the alerts that we've classified as needing your attention, right, versus if, if we look at, you know, the more information that we have, there's also events, which would be sort of those declassified um, behaviors and events that have occurred in your data center. So looking specifically here, right, we flagged that one that I talked about, the, the module integrity, where we've done that integrity check using our position within ESX. And then the other one is, you know, again, we talked about blacklisting, right? So if you've manually said that, hey, this process should be blacklisted for outbound connections, we'll go ahead and classify that up as, as a severe, uh, crit severe criticality, or criticality of severe. Um, and when I click on that alert, I can get more information, right? If it, if it was, you know, with blacklisted, you obviously don't have any associated allowed behaviors. But if there were similar allowed behaviors that were maybe for a different IP or a different port or different protocol, you can compare your, you know, the, the bad that we saw with the known good that's in the manifest. Um, and from here also, you know, you'll get more information on the hash and the CLI. But you can also take the actions from here. So this is sort of where you have that manual, okay, you know, I want you to alert me and then I'm gonna go in and decide how I wanna handle it. Um, and so that's, that's pretty much all we had uh, to discuss today. Any, any other questions? I think we might have made up some time to, uh, to so get you guys eating on time. App Defense runs in the VMware cloud on AWS, right? Uh, I think right now it's just on AWS. The, you're talking about the SaaS manager? No, the VMware Cloud on AWS, can I run inside those ESXi instances? Can I put oh, it Oh, today, today, not yet. Okay. Yeah. Will it work in out of hypervisor? So if I just had some bare metal container server? Uh, again, today, not yet. It does require the ESX, the vSphere on-prem deployment. Um, but those are all things that, that we're aware of and that we are looking at. Can you look inside containers to see which processes they are running? Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we've integrated with some other vendors and things like that to get that visibility, yeah. Who provides your reputation data? Um, I don't know how much I'm allowed to discuss. I do know if you look in the UI, you will see Carbon Black. Um, but there are you know, other public feeds and things like that that we do use. As a customer, can we change some of that reputation data? Uh, as far as I know, you cannot. I think it's, it's set by us who, who it's coming from. Is there a way to run instead of running using the cloud? Is there a way to run? Sorry. Use the dashboard using an um, on-site. Using, sorry, on site, that. not in the cloud. Not a oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So you will need connectivity to the cloud, but you can choose to sort of only have that, that plug-in um, UI and things like that available. No, no, no. So I, I mean, instead of using a SaaS, can I just bring all that on site? Oh, today, again, no. You do need, you do need to have um, connectivity to the cloud for that, for that verification cloud and things like that. Okay. I mean, not trying to do a roadmap thing or, or go into an area we can't know, but is that something you're looking into? Um, as far as I know, I don't think it has been. But um, again, we are looking at all sorts of deployments around you know, supporting containers, supporting different hypervisors, things like that.